This is a Zion Smooth 4 gimbal. It's designed for use with mobile phones. It will work with Apple and Android devices. This is how it's packaged. And then inside the case we've got the gimbal, a tripod that fits on the base, and a USB to USB Type-C charging cable. So when you look at the quick start guide, there's not an awful lot of information on it, and I thought it was strange that there was no manual. But when you read the quick start guide, it actually gives you a QR code to take you to a full manual online. So I'm going to charge it now. The charging cable goes in the port there on the right hand side. And as you can see, the LEDs have lit up and we've got one flashing so I would say that we're between 75 and 100% charged out of the box so that's the battery fully charged one of the first things you need to do when you've got the gimbal charged is to download the app and there it is so fix the tripod onto the bottom of the gimbal and then your phone needs to go in here now we pull these two brackets apart and slide it across until it's resting in the rubber grip there now you'll notice now that it's not balanced so it needs balancing you have to undo this knob here which allows this bracket to slide backwards and forwards that's about right there and then tighten that knob and now we can turn on the gimbal by pressing the power button for two seconds and that's a gimbal on so you can see that I've got the gimbal turned on and this has got a very neat feature called standby mode if I flip this down and clip it into place there's like a little buckle there that it clips into then it goes into standby mode so it's ready to use all you've got to do to use it again is to flick that back up again and you can see it is now back on again so if you're out and about using the gimbal and you've finished for a few minutes just put it back into standby mode and it will still be powered on ready to go in an instant but it's not draining too much battery so now that it's in standby mode I'm going to remove the phone from the gimbal and then I'll connect the phone and the gimbal together using the app click the app on the phone it says please connect the device so I'll click on there it's seen the smooth 4 so I'll click on that and that's it connected now so the phone is now connected to the gimbal now that was really very easy it's all done via Bluetooth you need to make sure that you've got Bluetooth turned on your phone so now we've got the gimbal charged and ready to go I want to go through a few of the features on the gimbal now these features that I'm going to show you now do not require the phone to have the app installed or for it to be connected to the gimbal these are just the automatic functions that the gimbal have got and the ones which everybody will be able to use straight out of the box so there's a toggle switch there it's got two settings the top one is pf which is pan following mode and the bottom one is l which is locked mode pan following mode is a mode that most people will operate this gimbal in at the moment you can see that the camera's kind of pointing horizontally outwards in pan following mode you can tilt the gimbal up or down and it will stay horizontal if you swing round, it will stay horizontal but if you actually turn the gimbal left or right, then you can see that the camera follows the gimbal. So that's pan following mode. If I switch that from pan following mode to lock mode, which is just flicking that switch down, then it basically will keep this camera pointing where it's pointing now, no matter what I do with the gimbal. All you've got to do is flick it back up into pan following mode and straight away you can actually alter the direction that the camera is facing. The next thing I want to talk about is this feature at the back. It's a toggle switch and you can either select up or down. So at the moment I'm in pan following mode. If I press the bottom of that toggle switch it goes into following mode. Wherever the back of this gimbal is pointing that's where the camera will go. Now that means that you can basically point the camera at anything you want to do. Now if you let go of that in a certain position so we'll leave that pointing down and let go it goes back into pan following mode but the camera stays in that position so that's very handy if you want to reposition the camera for a different shot while you're walking along and all you've got to do is double press that button at the bottom for it to turn back to a normal horizontal pan following mode the top toggle switch puts the gimbal into phone go mode now I'll press that and basically it speeds up the gimbal drastically so that you can pan and tilt very very quickly you can use that feature if you're somewhere like at a rally and there's a car going by the phone doesn't hesitate it just goes straight away now if I let go of that and do the same thing you can see it's much slower Zion have got a website uh, Zion Tech online and they've also got a lot of tutorials for this because it does way more stuff than I can actually show on this video so this gimbal will do all of the things I've just showed you without this phone being connected to the app so you could put any phone on this and it would do the same thing. Gimbals are going to improve any filming that you do with any phone dramatically because they iron out all the sudden movements. You end up with a really smooth picture and it looks really professional. And I would suggest if you really do enjoy filming with your camera, that you can't go wrong buying one of these things. And then I've done a lot of filming with gimbals before and it's improved my footage dramatically. Right, so let's do some filming. We'll go out with the dogs for a bit.
So I'm on pan following mode now. And I've got cookie in the centre of the frame there. Now if I want to get pickle in the centre of the frame, I'm going to press that button. Toggle switch and just bring the camera up. That's very nice. Pickle, thank you for that. So now I'm going to start walking and you need to watch the background compared to my head. And that will demonstrate what these things do. So I'm going to start running now. Now, you can see just how steady that background is. That is how effective these gimbals are. Then that will give you an idea of the difference when it's on the front facing camera as well. And you can see, I can see just by looking at it, that everything is all over the place. I'm just holding the phone a bit tighter, it's a little bit better. So I think what we'll do now is look at the functions on this that actually involve the phone being connected by the Zion Play app. And the first thing that we'll talk about is this wheel here on the side. So if the LED is on and you can see it's on there on that little crosshair, then it zooms. And if the LED is off, then it changes the focus. The one in the center at the bottom there is the record button. Now, if I press that, then you'll see that the camera starts recording now. That will only work if you've got the phone connected to the gimbal with a Z1 app. In fact, none of these control buttons will work if you don't have the app installed on the phone and it connected to the gimbal. So if I press it again, it will stop recording. This button with the picture of a camera on literally takes a photograph. The menu button at the top, that brings up the menu on the phone itself. If I press the left side of that wheel, it brings up the white balance. If I press the bottom of it, it brings up the library. So these are all the stored videos and photos. Now, one thing to mention is if you don't select them and save them, it will not put them on the phone memory. They'll be in the phone, on the phone, but it won't put them in the memory so that you can download them onto the computer. So you've got to save them. The button at the top will display the resolutions that you can actually record video in. It will only display the resolutions that your camera is capable of. Select whichever resolution you want, press the center button and then menu to come out of it. The left hand side changes it from the front to the rear facing camera, which means that you can record selfies. So if I press the menu button, we get into the nitty gritty of the software. So camera, if I select camera by pressing the button in the center, these are the different picture settings. Default is what you would expect it to be. It's just a normal picture. 180 degree panoramic, three times three panoramic. You've got multi exposure, long exposure, slow motion, time lapse, and motion time lapse. Motion time lapse allows you to take a time lapse while the gimbal is actually moving the camera and it's very effective. Vertigo is an interesting technique whereby you're walking towards an object and zooming out or walking away from an object and zooming in and it creates quite an interesting effect. Flash can be off on auto or on. It's basically just a camera light or you can have it on a steady light. You can select a self timer up to 10 seconds. This camera has got HCI, you can switch that on or off. White balance, you can use pre-programmed white balance settings for a sunny day, cloudy day, fluorescent lights or incandescent lights and that works really well, I've used that. Change the resolution as you can with this uh, switch at the top. Manual mode lets you change a lot of the settings on the camera like shutter speed and exposure value, that type of thing. I'm not good enough to use that to be quite honest. Scene selection, I'm going to leave that on walking but if I was doing something where I'm running or something like that then I would go for motion and then last but not least you've got all the settings so I'm not going to go through them needless to say that you should leave the camera mode on pro all the time So I just want to show you one more thing about this center button if I press that and hold it down it turns on the video light and if I press it and hold it down again, it turns it off. So if you need a little bit of extra light in one of your movies, then basically it's very, very easy to do using the camera's built-in light. So that's it. There's Ion Smooth 4. It's an absolutely smashing piece of equipment. It will improve your video no end. And if you're thinking about getting one of these things, you will not go wrong with this. It's got so many features. I've only just really brushed the surface on this video. It's a fabulous piece of kit, and I would recommend it to anybody. I hope you found this useful.